Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Cami Mancy, who's our guest preacher today, and everyone that is leading worship, we welcome you. We are so excited that you are here with us, that you will be sharing this time of worship. We are just so profoundly grateful to have this time with you. We're continuing on this day with our stories to live by. This is our sixth week in sharing these wonderful Bible stories and verses. So we're just so excited that you are here. I want to encourage you, everyone, to use our contact form. If it's your first time joining with us, make sure you fill that out. Uh, there's a place there for you to put your contact information so that we can get to know you and connect with you, that we can send you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about ministries and opportunities for growth and service with Douglas Avenue. There's also a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and our prayer team. So please use that contact contact form today. When we do gather for online worship, we always covenant together to participate and be a blessing. And that means that we're going to promise to fully participate in what is going on with our worship today. This isn't just a random video you're watching. This is worship together. And so go ahead and uh, focus in, turn off other devices and distractions that you may have, light a candle if it helps you, and then fully participate in the singing and the praying and all the things that we're doing. And then we promise, we covenant together to be a blessing. Blessing. And that means that the way that we're in the comment section together, the way we may be gathered with other people in our homes, wherever we are today, the way that we are with the community at large, that all of it will be a blessing for everyone. We're going to continue now in worship with a time of centering music, so I invite you to, to get yourself settled in and focused right now. And welcome to worship. Hi, my name is Tom Philbrick, and I play drums in the praise band. Please join me now in the opening prayer. Loving God, as we worship, transform us with your love. Transform our hearts, that we may love generously. Transform our eyes, that we may see your grace. Transform our hands, that we may serve others. Transform our spirits, that we may be the body of Christ, gathered to worship and send out to serve. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of the Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, uh, and with the folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Connie Sims, and I am a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, and for the next eight weeks I'm also going to be chair of the garage sale so I hope to see you all and um, peace be with you hello my name is Alexis I'm an associate here at Wibble and I just got my GED peace be with you hi I am Miss Lori and this is Laud the lamb and I am the director of youth and children's ministry here at Douglas and peace be with you Please join us in singing, Keep Making Me. Make me broken so I can be healed, cause I'm so callous. 
first And now I can't feel I want to run to you With heart wide open Make me broken It's everybody's favorite time, small talk. I want to invite all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to come in really close. Get into your device, your screen, so that you can see everything that's going on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb, her assistant. So come in right now for small talk. Hello everybody, it is Miss Laurie and Claude the Lamb and his friend Colin. Uh -huh. And right now, we are going to talk to you today about fear. Okay? Yes. So right now, we are on the Maid of the Mist at Niagara Falls. Claude was scared to death. Just Claude, not Cohen at all. And hey, we are Lord. so close. And so, when you get really scared like this, we oh, found that maybe saying a prayer would help. And we did. And it's helped. We were here. Whoa! Because some of us didn't even want to get on. But Are now we gonna we're die? at the fall. Yeah, look. We conquered our fear. Look at Thanks to God, knowing that we would be look. okay. Oh, oh. Everybody look. have we a great the day. Say bye, Lord. And we got to see part of God's amazing creation. So have a great day. Love you. We miss you. We'll be back next week. Bye. Hi, I'm Doreen Kylene. 
I'm a secretary for the Administrative Council, and I'm chairman of the Christmas area this year at the church's garage sale, July 16th and 17th. Come by and see us. Today's scripture reading from the Bible is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Over these summer months, our worship theme is Stories to Live By. We are sharing some of our very favorite stories and verses from the Bible that are particularly meaningful or helpful in our uh, lives of faith that are brought to us by the various preachers that are bringing the message during this season. It is wonderful to welcome Cameo Mansi as our preacher today. Cameo is a lifelong United Methodist growing up in Petersburg. When she moved to Springfield, she became a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, where many of her Springfield family were also members. Cameo's day job is working with Wells Fargo, but her anointing is surely in preaching, study, prayer, working with youth, and starting new ministries. In 2016, Cameo began, began the process of uh, being a lay minister in the United Methodist Church. She shares her gifts not only with our church, but in other churches and small group ministries throughout the area. Cameo now lives in Sherman with her husband, three kids, one dog, one cat, and one lizard. It's a busy household. Thank you, Cameo, for bringing our message today. Good morning, everybody. My name is Cami Mancy, and we're so grateful that you were able to join us for our service today. The theme for the past few weeks has been stories to live by, recognizing certain characters or certain parables that should account for our everyday lives. Margaret Ann related her story about going to be a blessing and her almost broken nose, um, but the opportunity for a beautiful family excursion and for the opportunity to remind us to never underestimate the power of love, the power of touch, and the power of being chosen for our service. Pastor Meredith talked a few weeks ago on the salt and the light, the parable from Matthew 5. She called it a transforming light, and she is absolutely right. In fact, the word transform is one that I would like you to put in your pocket and we'll refer back to later on throughout our, our sermon today. We are discussing Romans 12, and Romans 12 is a big one. In fact, Meredith and I joked quite a bit that you could do 75 sermons just on the first 12 verses of Romans. If you have a study Bible, it might outline that Romans 12 is a movement from theology to practical, giving ourselves to Christ as a living sacrifice, obeying our leaders, loving our neighbor, taking care of those who have less especially taking care of those who have less in the faith category. The second part of Romans 12 gets us uncomfortably close and personal to living out our faith, taking again that theology we read and putting it into a practical application, 
and active application each and every day. Do you believe that? Do you believe that we get an opportunity to live out in action our faith every day? Like in our reading, do you believe that you get a renewal every day? It says that in 2 Corinthians 4.16, we get a renewal of our inner self every day. Meredith and I, Meredith talked about living as a Christian in the world, and this book and chapter is a phenomenal outline of ways to do just that, how to take the heavenly and apply it to the worldly, how to take and put love into action. I think a lot about that, the ways that we as humans act in this world. Do we reflect any kind of heavenly behavior? Or are we so riddled with our flesh and behave and respond worldly? Do our actions and how we speak and behave show others that we want to follow Jesus, that we want to be like Jesus, that he is our example? Or do we often more come across as the fumbling disciples, trying to figure it all out, trying to get to know their Messiah, um, making it up almost as we go along? And I don't know about you, but I tend to lean towards the latter part of that category. Paul kicks off this chapter pretty hard and pretty quick. And in fact, the first word, one of the first big words that he uses is urge. I urge you to offer yourselves holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. Most believe it's coming to church on Sunday or being a part of a Bible study, singing in the choir, or applying the gifts that you have to a Sunday school class. That is really good things. But after reading this, may I offer a consideration that beyond Sunday and beyond study, our behavior to others, our example, is worship to God. So you mean to tell me that when I'm having a bad day and somebody cuts me off in traffic, I want to scream, I want to place blame towards others, that's my worship? As a matter of fact, it is. Take any circumstances that you may have experienced this past week, whether frustrating or disruptive. Did you get good news? Did you get bad news? Are you dealing with questionable and irrational people? How did you respond? Think wisely before you remedy your frustration and you hurl your faults towards someone else. Be as reflective as you can when you ponder before you counter or retort. In fact, I believe in Scripture it tells us that we are to be quick to listen and slow to respond. Be mindful. Be aware of others and where they may be in their life and their circumstances before we focus inward. It goes on further in this chapter to even outline that we, who are many, form one body. Each member belongs to the other. You wouldn't be mad at your hand because it can't do what your knee does. So why would you take your frustration out on someone who has nothing to do with your trial? Why would you throw insults and judgment towards your toe because it doesn't have eyes to see in the middle of the night and you stub your toe? You can't be mad at that. It just didn't have that tool. It didn't have that gift. It's an analogy, but I hope you see my point. We, us humans, are all one in Christ. Some do it better than others, and some don't do it at all. But if your heart has said yes to Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior, and you have professed your sins and confessed your faults, then we better really, and I mean really, think about those worldly versus heavenly responses and ways. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In a weekly young woman's group that started a few years back, we have talked about this topic and we've covered it with quite some focus. Um, in fact, in your bulletins today, and I hope you online are able to see it, but there's a handout that is included that even has a whole um, Excel spreadsheet of the heavenly ways versus the worldly ways. It outlines a number of circumstances and situations, events that happen to us daily, and how our earthly response is to be versus that of what our heavenly response is to be. So opposite, so irrational, so impossible and unattainable without Jesus and the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us. Participate with us in this thing called life. 
I urge you to go through that roster on your own time. Sit down with your family. Challenge yourself. Even 24 hours, give it one day to respond in an opposite manner as our world would like us to think. King and Country does a really good song, and because it's a song, I can memorize a lot of it. But Fix My Eyes, and some of you may have heard of it. Live like it's not fair. Love like I'm not scared. Take time for another. Live life for my brother. Fight for the weak ones and speak out for freedom. Find faith in the battle. Stand tall, but above it all, fix my eyes. But for today, our focus is on Romans. The latter part of this chapter truly takes that theology and sets it in a stage of practicality. It outlines and describes ways and actions that we can implement and set God's tone for wherever we go and whatever we do. And I mean, whatever we do. You order fast food or you go to a restaurant, be sincere and be kind. Someone suggests participating in making fun or poking jokes, and we all see this on social media. If it's at somebody else's expense, you better hate, dislike evil, and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another. In the latter part of Romans 12, there are 18 living sacrifices and love in action points of instruction. Paul outlines these for us. They aren't spelled out for us just to read. These are there for us to live by. I wish that I had the time to go through all of them, but here's just a few. Honor others above ourselves. Put others before ourselves. This one can be tricky. We have busy lives and we have a family. We have a calendar that is already scheduled months in advance. But reflect on that. Are you taking time to help others when the need presents itself? Or do you make excuses of busyness and penciled in events over someone who truly needs you, who truly wants you? This is a personal conviction that I have, and, and the key is balance, and finding that balance is tough. Again, help me out, Jesus. Help me out, Holy Spirit, to carve out that time so I can help out those others that may need it. Another one, being joyful in hope. Well, this is fairly easy, you would think, but where life comes into play, is it really? I got to talk to an Iraqi vet the other day, and it was a very heavy conversation. It was a very heavy topic. He was helping me prepare for a sermon that I'm going to do in October. This gentleman was originally signed up to go to the Air Force to fix engines. He went over for the first war. Well, when they got there, they quickly realized that this was not to be an air war. This was going to be a ground war. So they transferred him from the Air Force over to the Army to the infantry. His first go out, there was team A and there was team B. Team A went out, didn't come back. Team B, of which he was assigned, went out and came back. He was supposed to be in team A, but got pushed to team B. Instant guilt, instant regret, instant that should have been me and not my brothers. It's heavy, and he carries this with him wherever he goes. He's attempted suicide twice, and I'm very, very joy-filled to say that they were failed attempts. But why do I say all this? Because this soldier, this hard, this gruff, this grief-stricken soldier conveyed to me that the one thing that he had was hope. He had hope in helping somebody else. He had hope in being there for someone who was going through the same trials, the same pain, the same tragedy that he was. He has developed empathy, which allows him to connect emotionally with all of those who have been just as grief-stricken, who have just been as trial-filled, and who have received these same blows in life that he has. He is joyful in hope, despite all of his loss and pain. Another one is being patient in our affliction. Oof. Oh. Most of us think about drug or alcoholic tendencies when you hear that term affliction. But I'm here to tell you that anything that results in pain and suffering is affliction. Paul urges us, again, there's that word, to be patient in this space. But why? I'm in pain. This is a tragic and terrible season of my life, and it needs to go away right now. 
this is not fair that I'm facing this right now. This needs to go away, and this needs to go away now, and I'm mad. I'm really mad. I'm mad at God and everything that's made this happen. It's not fair. However, in that pain, if we don't take opportunity to step back, what we may miss, again, is an opportunity to go through something, to be patient, to be aware, to take a deep breath, to write it out, to seek God in it, to seek comfort in it. If we don't take an opportunity to do that in our affliction, then we may miss the whole point. We all have reasons to repent for the ways that we have succumbed to the worst demons in our sinful, infected selves. And Nightbird, who Margaret Ann spoke about a few times, her theme was, it's important for people to know that I am so much more than the pain that I have been through. I think about the Wibble women, how these women in their affliction have surrounded each other. They share with each other. They worship and they create with each other. That allows a space for patience to settle in and to know and to see that it will be okay. I think of the grief share that Doreen has carried with her through such a heavy loss that that grief share has allowed her to turn that loss into being there for someone else who has endured the same thing. It says in our reading, rejoice when they rejoice and mourn when they mourn. The chapter goes on to outline many other character applications to our behavior. Here's just a few. Practice hospitality. Pray faithfully. Bless those who persecute you. I'm going to say that again. It doesn't say curse. It says bless those who persecute you. Live in harmony with each other. Do not be proud and not willing to associate with those who have less. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil with evil and be very careful what you do is right in the eyes of everybody. Meaning, are you looking at these circumstances through your worldly lens or are you looking at these circumstances through a heavenly lens, through God's lens? Live at peace with everyone. And this depends on you, not others, but you. How are you responding to that space? How are you responding to those pains and afflictions? Are you responding in a peaceful manner? As my father would say, that's all we control, can control is our response. And one of my favorite, yet most likely the hardest, do not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. And I guarantee you, his punishment could be a whole lot worse than what we could ever rain down on someone. I get it. It's completely contrary to how we live and how our society would have us behave. The world is evil, and you can't overcome evil with evil. It doesn't work that way. And quite honestly, it doesn't feel very good. It hasn't ever worked that way. That's why God gave us Jesus. He had to give us an example, a truth-filled, peace-filled, love-filled example of how we are truly to overcome evil with good. The word transform is an action word. It's a verb. It means to make a thorough or dramatic change in the form of appearance or character of. Think of it as an electrical current, which is also a definition of transform. That Holy Spirit is that electrical current that we have to the one that sits at the right hand of God, that sacrificial one, Jesus himself. Keep hold of that current and do not let go because when you let go, when you stop praying, when you stop worshiping, when you stop being a blessing for someone, when you stop reading the word and staying very close to him, our behavior resets back to the ways of the world, which is not where you want to be, not even close. It just doesn't feel good. So work on that renewal every day to that transforming light in your flesh, separating us further and further from ourselves 
and working to get us closer and closer to Jesus and the life that Jesus lived and the example that Jesus is for us today. He died for that so that we could have that renewal each and every day. And I thank you, I thank you, dear Jesus, for that opportunity. And I pray that you all are bold enough to take advantage and ask for that opportunity today. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, as we practice staying faithful in prayer, we hear and read these words, but please permeate them into our beings, into our body, our mind, our soul, and our spirit. Let it be you to whom we cling and depend on. Let it be your example that we foster and encourage others that surround us. Put us in an opportunity of utilizing these tools for the glory of your kingdom in heaven here on earth. Allow us to make these and implement these daily practices of zeal, peace, harmony, and humility. Use us as your body, one body with all of our different parts, to work together towards the encouragement of heart and the unity of love. Our lives are yours, Lord Jesus. You have already done so much for us. Allow us to be bold enough to approach your throne today and request, what can we do for you? We love you so much, and it's in Jesus' mighty name that we say, amen. Please join us in singing Stand By Me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. Good morning. My name is Janet Schmidt, and I'm the organist at Douglas Avenue. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day, for your love, and for your many blessings. We thank you for the technology that allows us to worship together, even though we are physically apart. We lift up all the people who are traveling. We pray for relaxation and for a safe return home. We pray for the His Home Orphanage in Haiti. Thank you for the outpouring of love and support from the bike riders. Keep the children and staff safe during this time of turmoil. For those affected in Surfside, Florida, we ask for comfort for the families of those lost and continued safety for those in the search. Lord, we ask you to continue to keep us safe from COVID. We know that we are not totally through this time. Help us to keep ourselves and others safe. Please be with the health care workers and first responders. And thank you for the success of the Community Vaccinations Clinic. Each of us has requests of our own, and we lift them to you now. Thank you for hearing our petitions. And now be with us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During the past week, dedicated volunteers from DAUMC have put their faith into action in a variety of ways, serving the Springfield community. On Thursday, July 8th, 
28 new persons receive their COVID-19 vaccination at the Community Vaccination Clinic, which the church sponsored in conjunction with IDPH, Alderperson Aaron Conley, and the associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Thank you to everyone who worked so diligently to make that event a success. In addition, a cadre of workers has been working for weeks now to pull together the final arrangements for the DAUMC garage sale. That's right, we're back July 16th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and July 17th from 8 a.m. to noon. Event Chairman Connie Sims informs me that things are going well, but there is an important need. They need cashiers for the day of the event. If you can help, if you can run a calculator, greet people warmly and help check them out, please call the church office tomorrow and let Connie know that you're available to help. In addition, volunteers with the Compass program have been busy this summer providing Camp Compass activities to 650 elementary students from around District 186. The Camp Compass program was fortunate to have a visit this past week from U.S. Senator Richard Durbin. Each day, you can see people from Douglas Avenue stepping up to make a difference in the community that they serve. But in addition to putting this faith into effort, we also want to thank those who are so diligent in supporting the church through their monetary gifts. There are a variety of ways that you can provide your important monetary support to Douglas Avenue. First, you can go to our website, www.douglasavenue.org, and use the online giving portal to make your contribution. You can go to your bank and set up automatic bill payment to send an automatic payment to the church each month. You can also call the church office and work with Jesse to set up an automatic bank draft using our bank. And then finally, you can simply send your check to the church or bring it to in-person worship on Sunday morning and leave it in the box in the sanctuary. We really appreciate your giving. In the weeks to come, there are two important things that I want to stress. First of all is the importance of the garage sale and your support of that sale. Now I'm talking about more than just coming and buying. First of all, be looking for social media posts. Share those with your friends and neighbors on Facebook. We want to get the word out, and sharing social media posts is one of the best ways to get it. Secondly, spread the word in person. Thirdly, if you can help on the day of the sale as a cashier, let Connie know. We're going to have a great return effort for Garage Sale 2021, and this is the 45th year so it's very important. Secondly, just a reminder to our youth group members, beginning on Monday, July 19th, the youth group is going to take part in Serve Our Community Week. It'll be each day from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And each day our youth will go out and work with a different organization serving the Springfield community to help make our community a better place. If you haven't signed up for that yet, please do so. See the e-newsletter and you'll find a link there to sign up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact Ms. Loring. Thank you for all of the ways in which you support the ministries of Douglas Avenue. Please join us in Fourth in Thy Name, O Lord.
thank you for joining with us in worship at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. My name is Mark Schmidt, and I edit our weekly online worship videos, and it is my privilege to be part of the team that brings online worship to you each week. As you go into your week, there are a couple things I'd like you to remember. Number one, if you haven't yet filled out our online contact form, please take just a minute to do so right now with a special emphasis on your email address. Each week, we send out an email e-newsletter that provides information on everything that's coming up at Douglas Avenue. This is an important communication tool for the church and something that you won't want to miss. If you do have prayer requests, you can include those on the contact form as well or place them in the comments. And then we have for our youth group, Serving Our Community Week, which begins one week from tomorrow, Monday, July 19th. We'll have lots of photos of our youth making a difference in the community that they serve and love. As you go forth into your week, remember that each of us has gifts that we can use to advance the kingdom of Christ here on earth. Not all of those gifts are the same, as Cameo mentioned during her message today, but all of them are important. Go forth into the world this week to love your God and love and serve your neighbor. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week.